UCLA Next starts now. Guys, I'm Scott Meklowitz. I'm Merritt McCoy. And I'm Cheryl Umana, and this is UCLA Next. Tonight we get a fitness tip from Stacy Newman, the catcher on the UCLA women's softball team. She won the uh, gold medal in the Olympics, didn't she? Yeah, in she Sydney did. or something? Yes. Yeah, so she knows what she's talking about on the ship. Bob Rosen's guest tonight is screenwriter Faye Kanan. They'll take a second look at the Doris Day Clark Gable film Teacher's Pet that Ms. Kanan wrote with her late husband, Michael Kanan. They won an Academy Award nomination for that screenplay. See, nobody forgets the nominees. It just doesn't happen that way. And in the final segment, Alex gets to go see one of the dogs who works at the UCLA hospital. I wanted to go with them. Al um, Valerie was sick, and still they didn't let me go. They mm -hmm. never take you anywhere. They I never know. take us anywhere. That's because we're the anchors. We sit in chairs. Now, do I have to explain this every week? Yeah, what exactly does being an anchor mean anyway? Yeah. <sighs> okay, Scott. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. So, why don't we look at um, camera one? Okay. Look at camera three. Look at camera three. Okay. Okay, now give us a big smile. Okay, <sighs> you're done. I'm you go can over go. There. Yeah, I'll, sit down. Thank I'll be you. Here. Okay, now, Cheryl, it's your turn. All right. Did you like that? Now, Cheryl, let's um, take a nice big smile. Look at camera three. Three. Okay, you can go. Keep Scott company. Oh. All right. I'm Finally, I'm when she leaves, <laughs> ha, we'll begin this evening with Carol Schatz. Carol Schatz is the first woman to serve as president and CEO of the Central City Association. The Central City Association are LA boosters who have been promoting downtown business interests for 76 years. Ms. Schatz, welcome to UCLA Next. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Did you find it hard being a business advocate in downtown LA? I did in the early 90s when things were, were looking pretty grim, but now we are in the middle of a full-blown renaissance and the momentum is with us and we see so many things happening in downtown. It's so exciting to be there. So what's the big change? What's the momentum? What is making this happen? We have major facilities like Staples Center, right. the cathedral that's about to open in September of this year, and Disney Concert Hall, which will bring Staples has already brought a few million people to downtown Los Angeles, right. and those two facilities, world-class architecture, mm -hmm. are going to bring millions more, and housing, okay. and clubs, and restaurants. So it's a tumbleweed effect. One thing brings the That's next. right. That's right. Everybody here in town, we go to the beach. Visitors, they come and they go to the Venice Boardwalk, or they want to go to Disneyland, like you were saying. What are we missing downtown? What should the tourists be coming here to see downtown? Well, we have... Uh, the incredible attractions that I just mentioned. Right. Um, and we have fabulous and wonderful architecture in our historic buildings. We have the beautiful downtown, our central library is an absolutely magnificent building uh, and something that everybody should bring their kids to see okay. with wonderful activities and programs for kids. Uh, obviously at the Music Center and uh, in, yeah. in our, our theater complex, the Los Angeles Opera, which is world renowned. Um, and then we have um, all kinds of wonderful um, walking tours of our artist loft district, of all the new housing that's going in in the historic core. On the housing, is it mostly residential or are we finding a lot more artist lofts being built downtown now? Well, um, we, had, uh, we, had, we have an artist loft district. Right. Uh, we now are finding that more and more older office buildings are being converted to housing. Yeah. And we expect about uh, 8,500 new units to be built in downtown Los Angeles wow. by the end of 2004. And these are people who want to live in an urban setting. But what's the cost? Well, uh, most of those units are for rent. Right. And um, I mean, do you I have, have to make I, a lot of I money to afford them? Though? Well, it, it, it's market rent, just okay. like you pay, right. pay on the west side. Um, 
but that's what we need. We need to bring, ha have more people living downtown. Okay. Then we'll get more of the cafes and the bookstores. Right. And because you think of downtown now, you think, okay, you're just going to go down there to work. We don't think of it as a social place to right. go to. Like, where do you go for dinner downtown? Where would well, be the hot that restaurant? is one of the best, uh, and hopefully not a secret anymore. We've right. got several four-star um, uh, restaurants. We have Cafe Pino. We have the okay. Water Grill. Uh, Zuka just opened up, which is new Joaquin Special uh, Restaurant. Morton's has opened up. The Palm wow, is no about idea. to open up right what next to Staples Center. What about the pantry? Center. Those famous old pantry little places. Pantry is there okay. and feeds a lot of people going to Staples uh, on any given yeah, night. Yeah. But the but the restaurants downtown town are fantastic, and there's all kinds of clubs that are opening up and all kinds of very strange locations downtown. And we also have a new artist colony that's opening up in Chinatown with mm. wonderful new fashion designers displaying their wares and art galleries as well. On the note of fashion designers, I'm familiar with the New Mart and the California Mart, and then there's also the Flower Mart that mm -hmm. I've been wanting to go to. I mean, tell the viewers about these marts. These are wonderful treasures, yeah. and in the California Mart is where all of the uh, wholesalers uh, have their offices. They have sample days. Yes. And Favorite day, last Friday get, of every month. <laughs> you can get fabulous bargains. Um, the Flower Mart has the most beautiful flowers because they sell to every florist in the city. And you can go down there and get whatever you want. Now you have to go we really have a toy early district. We, yes, you right? have to go very early in the morning to get the best, okay. to get the best, best selection. Okay. But you can't find anything like it anywhere else. And our fashion district is just absolutely alive with uh, activity and vitality and talking about bargains from all yeah. all strata of, of, of clothing from very high end to very low end yeah. and it's just a lot of fun to be down there. No, that's true. I've been going there for a couple years and I find a lot of great finds. Isn't it? Yeah. It's really great. Earlier you were talking about a couple of the architectural buildings that have skylines I know have shown up in movies in the past like Chinatown and one of the Jackie Chan movies. Mm -hmm. Are there any other films being shot right now that we should know about? Well, hopefully we're going to be uh, uh, having, a f having Arnold Schwarzenegger's new, new film filmed at the Los Angeles Center Studios which is a studio complex just west of the Harbor Freeway. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, for people who don't know, um, we uh, are the most filmed location in the world. Downtown Los Angeles is the most filmed location in the world because you can get it all there. You can get a palm tree there. Yeah. You can get bums and and right. and, and you can get all city, that's right? that's right. You can get a, you get whatever you want. Are there any other new projects coming along right now that'll change the face? The, the look of downtown. Yes. Well, obviously, Disney Concert Hall, which and the and the and the walls are going up on Disney Concert Hall, okay. is a fabulous thing to see right now, even though it's not complete. Okay. It's just f phenomenal, and and the cathedral, okay. and our housing, Great. and more clubs coming Great. and restaurants. So it's a place to come and and visit and bring your kids, give wow. them a sense of the history of L.A. Well, she just sums it up, and I have to stop you. Sorry, but it's it's a place to go, place to eat, a scenic. We we have a place to shop, museums. I mean, everything to offer. Thank Terrific. you. Thank you for your time. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Carol. All right, guys, so that's what, when you come to town, just don't go to the beach. You've got to go town town. You have to shop. You have to eat. You have to go to museums, everything. Now we're going to go to Nicole Cahaya to get a fitness tip from UCLA softball star Stacy Nuveman. Hey, everybody, it's Nicole. I'm here at Easton Stadium where we're about to get our latest fitness tip. So let's go on inside and meet this week's athlete. Hi, I'm Stacy Newman, number 33 on the UCLA women's softball team. Here we are at Easton Stadium. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do run through a couple of TheraBand exercises, these lovely looking plastic rubber band type deals that uh, we use in the softball field to keep our shoulders nice and strong and uh, today we're going to test this one out and see if she can hang, so right. we'll see. <laughs> Alright, so the first exercise we're going to do is it's, it's a bicep curl basically, okay. so you hold, if you start with your right hand, okay, hold, hold this with your left, okay. and then you kind of hold it down by your left thigh, and, and you're just pulling in, you do like two sets okay, of 15. I'm not holding that right, like that, Tight. no. Right. Now you got it right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there oh, we go. that took me a long time. Okay, so 15, but the key is you want to <laughs> make sure you keep your elbow by your side and mm -hmm. not getting it out of here. This way it's going to isolate your bicep Aww. a little bit. So this is just a little bicep warm up. 
can wrap it around your back, hold okay. on the back side, and you're going to do triceps. So now we extend, pulling up through uh -huh. like this. It helps cool. with arm flap, right? Absolutely. And that's, that's one what thing. I suffer from. That's a benefit. Yeah. Beyond getting strong so, shoulders, yeah, you right. get rid of the arm no, flap. No more of that. Now, that's another one. So that same thing, two sets of 15. Okay. The next one we're going to do is you hold it out in front. Okay. Loose, and then as you, you pull it tight, making sure that you're keeping all your muscles nice and tight as you do it in the back, okay. in your back, and your shoulders. Nice. Pulling it across okay. your chest. Ooh. Same thing, two by 15. You'll start okay. to feel it eventually. Okay. Now, this is probably the worst one, yet the best one. I guess it depends on how you look at it. So, you, same thing, hold it down here by your left thigh. Okay. And start your hand low, right next oh. to it. And you pull up and through out and across. Through out and across. Are you doing that right? Slow. Slowly. And then once Ooh. again, as you start going, mm -hmm. you're gonna start feeling it as your muscles fatigue. And also, more importantly, mm -hmm. you have to keep good form. Because if okay. you go too fast or too just jam, yeah. then it's okay. bad. So you just gotta go nice and slow, nice slow and pull it up through. And the same thing, two sets of 15. Okay. All these things basically are gonna strengthen the shoulder. And for throwing a throwing sport like softball, that's pretty important. You don't want to have injuries. So sounds good. Buffing up. So when I first thought, saw that, I thought, how can it possibly be hard to yank on a rubber band? So, so. Nicole decided to come to the studio and show us. Hey, everybody. I okay. brought TheraBands with spicy. me. Oh, yeah. What they are, are they these blue, stretchy things. They're by a company called TheraBand. Okay. And if you'd like to buy some, you can go on the internet or get them from your physical trainer or someone like that. They come on this big, long roll, so they just um, cut you a piece off. And I guess now I'll hand you one, Scott. And mm. here you go. Does Marriage? Diane Sawyer have to do mm. this? She ran with the Olympic torch. Okay, does this look like the Olympic torch? Does this look like Good Morning America? <laughs> okay, <laughs> and for I'm there. just going to whip you guys. Okay, How about hey that there. Okay, everyone, stand up. We are going to try the first exercise that Stacy showed us, and it's for your bicep. So, first, hold the ends of TheraBand in your left hand. Put your left hand by your left thigh, and then all you're going to do is you're just going to curl up like that. Across. And make I'll just sure, do this Yes, way. across. So cross. And I'll just oh, stick with okay. this way. Anyways, you want to make sure that your elbow is next to your side and you don't want to do the chicken wing thing that I was caught doing, you know. Mm. Anyways. Got All it. Right. <laughs> next exercise is the tricep one, so throw it behind your back. And if, Scott, you want to follow along, that would be really super, you know. But how so where does so your sorry. left hand go? Where does your left, your left hand go? Just behind your back, kind of rest there. Okay. Try to keep it in one spot. And you lift up, get through the arm flat, oh, yeah. builds the shoulders, oh, good yeah. stuff like that. Okay, mm. moving on is the chest exercise. How you doing, babe? And uh, we're having fun with the TheraBand, so you should get one too. Okay, hold it out in front of you with your hands together and you just stretch across. Do they have okay, scented TheraBands? Because <laughs> not the it. most pleasant to smelling okay, TheraBand. Anyway, so I've... we're going like this, Scott, mm -hmm. and you know, you feel it in your chest yeah, and your you do. back and you do. Good. Yeah, it feels it's good, good, yeah. Sure. All right. So okay. if we want more resistance, <laughs> should we shorten the strap? Sure. They yeah. also come in different weights. This is a relatively lightweight one because I knew Scott would have what trouble. Is it, which what does it is, work? You know, what and, muscle um, group does it work when I whip you like that with it? Okay. Does that work my While we're exercising, let's go down to the Mustache Cafe that? for a second look. Hello, I'm Bob Rosen, Dean of the School of Theater, Film, and Television at UCLA. And I'd like to welcome you to a second look at the movies. You know, there are those films that you've seen in the past that stay in your memory and you want to see them again, or maybe they're those great movies that you wish you'd seen, and now is another opportunity. Well, we're here to take a second look at some of the wonderful movies of the past. And I must say, talking about movies best is around the table and around the great table and the great table here is at the Moustache Cafe in Westwood where I've been coming for the past 28 years ever since I came to Los Angeles and even better is to be talking with a great friend um, in this case Faye Kanan. Faye Kanan is widely respected in the industry as a writer for many many decades 
as the former president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and as a great friend and supporter of the history of film through preserving those films so they can be passed on to future generations. I know with all the movies that you've written and you've written, I guess, Quite together, a few. you know, with, with, with your, your late husband, Michael Kanan, uh, that it's really unfair to ask you to pick out one to talk about. I guess you love all your children. Sure. But I must say, <laughs> Teacher's Pet is one of enduring importance. I know it recently showed down at the Los Angeles County Museum as part of a retrospective tribute to you and to the writing career that you've had. And Teacher's Pet in 1958? 58, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I wrote, we think we wrote it in 57, but it didn't get made till 58. For people who haven't seen it, it's, it's a wonderful comedy that has, and again, it's unlikely casting for this comedy, and it works spectacularly well. It has Clark Gable as the hard-boiled uh, journalist who sits in, pretends to be a student, of the very intellectually oriented, as opposed to his own anti-intellectually oriented approach to journalism, the very intellectually oriented of all people, Doris Day. Mm -hmm. And and there's wonderful performances and the movie's about something. But talk about the writing first. What does it mean to work collaboratively? How does that work? Well, I'll, first let me tell you how the movie got made. We made it first because you said it's such a comedy, right. and it is, as a serious movie. Yep. We thought we were dealing with a very serious theme, which is the uh, snobbery of the self-made man yeah. about the intellectual. And we said, that's a great serious discussion because that doesn't happen. You know, we, we want to deal with that. So we, f we wrote originals a lot, and this was an original. We sent it out. We generally sold our original. Mm. Nobody bought it. It just moved around, and everybody said, very nice. Nobody bought it. So we took it back, and we said, something's wrong. And then Garson, our, our, my brother-in-law, uh, Michael's uh, brother, had just done Born Yesterday, which mm. was a serious theme, but done as a wonderful comedy. Mm -hmm. And we said, maybe we should do Teacher's Pet as a comedy. So we went back, and we re rewrote it about six or eight months later, and we sent it out. It was bought the next day. It was bought by Pearlberg and Seaton on first viewing. So it was meant to be a comedy, I guess. But comedies often convey serious themes. Do you think yes. people, the industry that we're both part of, don't take comedy seriously enough? Well, they certainly don't because you look at the awards, mm -hmm. just the Oscars or other awards. It's very seldom that a comedy wins an award, although it can be just as... Uh, exciting and as, uh, as rewarding, but somehow you take drama seriously, and that's a shame, that's a shame. Let me ask you about writers and whether they're taken seriously. <laughs> this movie is about, about, uh, about an intellectual, an intellectual woman, as a matter of fact, right. who's not taken very seriously. And I wondered whether there was anything of your own experience as a writer, a writer in Hollywood that might have made its way into that script. Well, I'd like to say, you know, oh, well, I had a hard time as a woman, and I did. Mm. I'm, I really must have led, a Bob, I think, a charmed life, mm. because though maybe there were things that I wasn't able to do because they said a woman, but they never said it to me. I really always did very well. It's clear to me you didn't lead a charmed life. You obviously did all the right <laughs> things. You, well. wrote, you wrote great <laughs> scripts, and you had to relate to others in a collaborative uh, yeah. filmmaking setting. Yeah. Well, it is. Mm. You know, the the one thing I I resent a bit is when I see a such and such with the director's name film, yeah. a a film by such and such director, because. I really think it's a collaborative art. It starts with the written word, it starts with the screenplay, and then everybody uh, contributes, and I don't think it's any one person's movie. So I resent that credit a little bit. Well, I must say, no one will resent 
having gone back to take a, a second a second look at Teacher's Pet, I think and not. I highly recommend it. I enjoyed it. A film for people to discover. Yes. For us, let's discover dinner. Good enough. I'm ready. <laughs> Faye Kanan also won two Emmys and was a working screenwriter for over 40 years. So, uh, what was up with that picture of Clark Gable there? Yeah, what was Doris Day doing to him? <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> okay, that's what you want to know? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Did, did you see that guy's face? It was a little bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very strange picture. That reminds me of this Zen saying, when a finger points to the moon, only a dog looks at the finger. <laughs> Is that your clever segue to the dogs <laughs> in the hospitals bit? You can interpret that as All that. Right. Yes, it is. Well, Alex is going to take us to see some dogs who work at UCLA hospitals. Without me. Of course. Last week they wouldn't let this kid into the clean room, but this week they're going to go let him visit very, very sick people. Yeah, maybe they think he's dusty, but not infested with microorganisms. Right. <laughs> okay. Micro yeah, let's go to the dogs. This is a, uh, we're having a people-animal connection right here, PAC, it's at the UCLA hospital. And here with us is Carrie Gardner, volunteer, and she brought her dog, Siska. And we're gonna ask him questions. You ready, Siska? Siska doesn't talk yet. For all those who don't know what this is, what exactly is this? What is the, uh, you know, the, the statement that you put on that paper? The mission. You, the mission statement. Yes. The, the mission of the people-animal connection is to bring dogs into the sterile environment of the hospital setting and have them actually visit with the patients and let the patients touch them and feel the warmth and make a connection with the dogs in order to improve their overall health. Do you memorize that? No, no, but I felt really good saying it. You sounded amazing. <laughs> Look at that baby. What, what a camera hound, huh? <laughs> What a camera. So this is Things your like, dog? This is my dog. Okay. Yes, everybody who's in the program works with their own personal okay, dog. that's cool. So you're an experienced dog visit by now? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. I think there's about four visits a week, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe five sometimes. Hi, Mr. Jansen. Hi. Has there been any studies, you know, proving that dogs have healing powers or has there been any you know, statistics or any of that yeah. stuff? Here at UCLA we did a survey of 200 staff and patients and looked at how, what effect the dog visits had and it definitely increased the satisfaction, the happiness, decreased the anxiety, had a calming effect and overall made people feel happier. And that wasn't true just for patients, it was true for staff also. And both groups of people were equally affected by having the dogs come and visit. I think a, a big part of that has to do with the fact that dogs seem to just be purely unconditional love. They don't care if you are, you know, 400 pounds or two pounds, you know, they seem to just, okay, that was a little extreme, but... Um, <laughs> are you from L.A.? <laughs> <laughs> if you're a burn victim or if you're uh, anything, you know, they, they see right past it and they just mm -hmm. can tell you're just a good human being. Exactly. Regardless of how much gel you have in your hair, they're right there for you. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, so soft. I understand you folks left some dogs behind at home. Yeah, we got one that's not quite this size. <laughs> it's a toy <laughs> poodle. <laughs> Almost every visit we have yeah. one visit that is really remarkable, but I think probably one that is probably touched me the most was a visit with a, uh, where I had actually done all my visits with patients, and I was just sitting in the nurse's station finishing up my paperwork, and a, about a seven-year-old girl walked out of the ICU and saw Siska lying on the floor, and she came up and she dropped to the floor next to him and just sat there and started petting him. While she pet him, tears started rolling down her face. He just laid there quiet, didn't move a muscle, and as she pet him, she cried more and more, not saying a word. I turned to the elderly man who was with her and, and asked if they were there visiting somebody, and he said that his son, her father, was in the ICU dying. And uh, she must have sat there for a, almost a half an hour. 
just petting Siska and crying, and then she dried her tears and got up and went on her way. Next week, Bob Rosen will return to the Mustache Cafe for a second look at Gigi. Valerie and Alex will get to go somewhere. And we will still be right here. If you're lucky. That's all we got to do. So, join us on UCLA Next. Close to the